Hello, welcome to the Stockyard Industrial Lead. I'm Eric Miller, and on today's edition of Car Shop, we are going to be talking about freight car storage. How do you store the cars that you don't currently need on your layout, and why? We'll cover these topics and go in a little bit more detail. So the reason that I want to cover this topic on this video is because I this is probably the thing that I've been getting the most questions about and comments, and people saying, hey, I want to know more about your your drawers that you have on your layout for storing freight cars. And so I thought, yeah, I can definitely cover those. But what I want to do is kind of give a little bit more background about it and talk about the big picture. So the big picture of any layout is where do your freight cars come from? Where are they going to? Because as you, you most of you probably know or also model is that your layout isn't, you know, self-sufficient. In other words, you don't have cars going, you know, just roaming around the layout, going to different industries, they actually go somewhere else in the world. Um, at least that's how the stockyard industrial lead is set up. So we're just a little industrial spur and all of our freight cars basically come into this yard right here. This is the South Omaha yard. And so all the cars come here via transfer. And then the South Omaha terminal takes these cars and serves the industries with them. And so that's kind of the big picture is that these cars are coming on and off the layout and so I need a, a place for them to go once they come off the layout. And another way to look at it too, is that you want a little bit of variety. You can't have the same cars constantly coming to and from the yard. At least that's the way that I look at it. You want a little bit of variety so that, um, you know, if, if you have the same operators coming over or visitors coming over to your layout, hopefully they're seeing some different freight cars. So it looks a little interesting. And it also matches the prototype because if you're out there watching, you know, local switch customers, you'll see random cars coming in and out at various times. You might see the same types of cars, um, but, but you're going to see different uh, road numbers or, you know, different uh, types of, of railroads represented. So I wanted to bring a little bit of that realism and that variety to the stockyard industrial lead. So I wanted a place where I could put the freight cars that go off and have, have uh, some of that variety. And so I would say that what I aim for is basically at least, you know, kind of somewhere between two and four times the amount of freight cars that I need for any customer so that I have a decent level of variety. So now that you know kind of the big picture and the basic reason behind it, um, I'll go into a little bit more of what I do for that and why. So I thought I'd give you an example of this, of how this works on my layout. So let's just say that this is the local that just came back from switching some industries, as you see right here. And um, the, basically the obsession is done. So now what do I do? Uh, basically what I do is I'll generate a new switch list from JMRI Ops, and it'll tell me, okay, now these cars are needed from the yard to go to the industries. And um, most likely these cars will not be needed because they were just used in the op session. So then what I'll do is I'll take these cars off and then I'll sort through my drawers that I have down here and find the new cars for the next op session. And that's basically the only preparation that I need to do for the next op session. Um, it's, it's very little work. I just have to make sure that the correct cars are back here at the South Omaha yard to go back out. And so that's why I need some storage for, for my operations is so that I can have a place to put these cars because obviously the layout is, or the, the yard uh, for the layout is a lot smaller than all the cars that I have. And that's the point is so that these cars are basically going off into the real world to where they really need to go. And so then they can come back onto my layout at a later time after they've, you know, uh, basically shipped their stuff or or maybe they've refilled and come back for the customers. Um, so I hope that explains a little bit of the process and the reasoning behind why I, I find the need uh, that I need uh, for some car storage, um, because I wanted to basically go through that a little bit before I go into what the car storage is for. So so that's that's basically the, the main reason behind it. Now that said, um, I don't need a ton of storage, but I'll go through the reasonings behind why I'm storing the cars that I do. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is with JMRI Ops, how I have it set up is that the South Omaha yard capacity is way bigger than what you see here with basically I have three tracks and then a run through track uh, that goes in the back. Um, so I have the capacity set up th so that I can basically fit all of my entire rolling stock. Um, and, and so that way the JMRI is grabbing any car out of here at all. And so the South Omaha yard then is both this yard right here, 
And it's also the real world, you know, what's out there. And that is what I have in my storage. So that's how it works for the operations part of my layout. So now that I've explained that, I'll then go through how I set up building my drawers and what I use them for. So these are my freight card drawers. And when I originally designed these, I had a much larger layout. The layout was at least twice the size of what I had now. And so I wanted to design drawers that would hold at least 400 freight cars. Now my size is down to about 100 freight cars. And because I, I just have a much smaller spur, I don't really need that many cars. And so I've, I've now have the luxury of having some extra space. And so I'll show you what I use that for. But that's what I calculated was 400 cars to begin with. And so um, I, I wanted to, to be able to have a variety of cars. And basically the way I figured out is that each drawer would have like a certain different type of car. So it'd be very easy to find. And I like I said, I designed these myself because I kind of looked around and I figured out that there wasn't any kind of cabinet or uh, drawer style that would efficiently fit cars. And so basically what I did is I just drew these out and the way that I figured out the length of the drawers was that it would easily fit like a standard 50, 55 foot car, three of them across. And I also wanted it to be able to fit the smaller um, two bay hoppers that I have a lot of. And those I have in this drawer here. And so I wanted to be able to fit four across there. So like these are my cement hoppers that I use. So that, that was the design because I had a lot of box cars. I had a lot of uh, covered hoppers like these that I wanted three across and then these four across. And then tank cars and other random things would uh, just kind of work. Um, it's not super efficient with the longer like center beam flat cars because those can only be two across. But the other thing that I decided to do early on was I use these inserts from A-Line Hobby, which I don't know if any of you um, know about the, the A-Line Hobby boxes that they make uh, for the tote storage that you can, they're really good for, for taking along if you're going to... Um, like if, if you have a club layout or something like that and you want to bring freight cars from home to another layout or to a club layout, um, they're really good. And so I used to use those a lot before I built my layout. And I thought, you know, these are really good for separating the cars so they're not hitting each other, not getting damaged. And so I thought that would work really well. And what I did is these are almost the full length of an A-line um, tote, but just a little bit shorter because like I said, I wanted to be able to fit, you know, the three across box cars or covered hoppers and the four across uh, two bay hoppers. Um, but so what I did is I, since I didn't want to buy a ton of totes that I wouldn't need, I uh, sent an email to A-Line Hobby and I said, hey, could you sell these inserts um, just separately? And they said, oh yeah, sure. So they were able to do that for me. And I think if you go to their website, they might still be able to do that. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. That was several years ago. So um, the drawers... I actually then, like I said, I drew out a design. Um, I worked with a, a, a friend of mine who was really good at woodworking, had a really nice wood shop, which I do not have. And, and we built these together. He did a lot of the work. And so, um, but I basically showed him my design and I said, hey, what do you think? And he said, yeah, I think that'll work and figured out how much wood we need to buy. And so basically um, these are drawers that are just, uh, I'll show you the, the drawer glides I just bought at like a cabinet shop. They're pretty simple. Um, you know, just like plastic drawer glides. And so, um, pretty basic stuff. Let me bring you down. I'll try to show you, show you these. So they're just really simple drawer glides, just like for any kind of normal cabinet. And then the other thing that I had to buy a lot of was screws. <laughs> and my friend actually had a lot of these on hand and then I just paid him back for them. Um, all these drawers can come out just like a regular, you know, drawer in your kitchen. And, uh, but I you know, don't really have a need to take them out. And so we basically just cut a bunch of these sizes of pieces of wood and screwed them together. And then, you know, built the boxes around there. And then another friend of mine with a big truck uh, was able to move them from his place to mine. And here we are. So this is, that's basically how they were built. Um, I hope that covers it for you. Um, definitely let me know if you have more questions on on how I built them. But I thought the the construction of it was was pretty basic and and came along pretty pretty easily. And 
essentially the way I came up with the dimensions, like I said, I wanted to, to fit those three across 50, 55 foot cars and then the four across two bay hoppers. Um, as far as, as the depth, it basically just translated to what I had here in my yard, um, which is, uh, I believe like two feet at this point. And so I just made sure that fit there. And, uh, and then, cause I really didn't care how many rows I had to have, have after that. So, so that's basically how it, how it came along. And then I, I made sure that obviously the drawer glides in here fit that as well. So, so yeah, that's how it, how it came along. And, and I just figured out the number of drawers based on the, the height here fitting underneath the layout. Um, and then kind of calculated it to, to, okay, 400 cars. So that'll work. So that's what I did. Um, and like I said, I felt that this, this was better than buying something just from a factory. Like, uh, I couldn't really find any good drawers that were being sold at the time. Um, that would be the sufficient for storage. And then the other thing I decided not to go, not to do that is common or maybe popular with some small switching layouts is the, the cassette idea, uh, largely because I just wanted to be able to pick and choose my freight cars and just say, Hey, you know, I want this one now. And, and to build, to build each, uh, to build the yard for each uh, op session um, and, instead of having, and I like to be able to do a little bit of yard switching. So that's probably the main reason is, is just uh, the yard switching that goes on before each op session is why um, I don't find the cassette to be um, good for me, but you know, it's, it's just kind of a layout owner preference. And uh, this, this works really well for me. And I like the accessibility of having the car storage right underneath the yard. That works great. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's basically it. The only other thing that I'll talk about is, um, that I think I need to cover is what do I do now that I don't have 400 freight cars and that I designed these for 400 freight cars. Um, so one thing that I'm doing now that I didn't used to do is I'm storing locomotives and cabooses in here. Um, I don't have a ton of locomotives. This is basically it. And a lot of these are just kind of for display, but these are, uh, this is my UP that I'm going to be working on. Here, this is my old U23B shell that I'm putting a B23-7 shell on the, the chassis. And then this is the UP caboose. So, um, okay, so that video cut out. I'm not sure why, but I'll continue talking about what else I use the drawers for besides the um, car storage now that I don't have 400 freight cars. And so just looking in this drawer, I also have basically all my material here for uh, conductors for op sessions. So I've got my uh, switch sticks over here, pens, uh, keys for the conductor. I've also got my timetables. Uh, so that info is all handy right there. And then the other thing that I use in these other drawers way down here is that I've put, um, you know, so like passenger cars and intermodal cars. Um, I've got a lot of trucks and intermodal cars that I'll take on and off the layout. So, so it's uh, very handy for that. So basically anything that kind of moves on the layout and that I might want to swap on and off goes into these drawers now. So, and I've, I just have a lot of extra space too. So that's really handy. And then um, another thing I want to cover real quick is I just thought maybe it'd be helpful to go over some dimensions for you uh, in, in case anybody wants to kind of replicate this at home. Uh, so each of these drawers is basically 28 inches across from end to end. And that's, like I said, just the dimension that I came up with so I could fit these, these three across box cars. And the depth of each drawer looks like 18 inches there, which that actually matches. There, there's the, you can see the dimension there. And that matches how uh, wide my layout is at the yard point here. And so a foot and a half seems like a, a pretty good amount. And, and so I've got two of these uh, chipboards in here that, that easily fit here. And you've, you've actually got, you know, another, another row. Um, let's see show you that another another row that you can fit back there um but so that's eight rows of cars that you can fit through there and like i said when i initially calculated this i came up with somewhere between 400 and 450 freight cars that i could put in here um which was which i seem seemed to be plenty for what i needed then and now is more than enough so that's a good sign um and then the the height let's take a look at that We've got uh, basically right at three feet here, 36 inches uh, from the bottom to the top. And the height of my layout at this point is uh, 45 inches. So I wanted to have enough room for the fascia and then the car storage to fit underneath that. 
So those are the dimensions that I came up with. And then the other important thing that I want to point out is that I wanted to have adequate spacing in between each drawer, just so you can get your hands in between each one as you're, and, and easily get the cars out. Um, and then I, I also like, that's what I like about these chipboards that here that I got from A-Line is that, um, you know, it's pretty easy to get your fingers in there and get the cars in and out. So it works really well. And, um, you know, as you're opening and closing the drawers, the cars don't tip over or, or you know, I don't have to worry about, about them breaking and stuff like that. The handling is, is pretty good with these kind of drawers. So it works really well. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically it. Three feet high, you know, 28 inches. The, the entire width of box here, we're basically sitting at 30 inches for the, the complete width. Each drawer is 28 inches. I had to figure in the, the space for the drawer glides there. Um, but yeah, it was, like I said, it was pretty simple construction. Um, it's just all boxes, so everything's at right angles, so pretty easy to uh, to draw out and plan it, and then cut the wood. You know, you're just basically cutting a bunch of rectangles. So it, it, like I said, it came together pretty fast. Um, I just use a little bit of wood glue on each of these, screw them together, um, and that's it. So, so yeah, three feet tall, um, th 36 inches tall, 18 inches deep, and um, you know, just the, the 28 inch width is what I came up with. Um, I also wanted to make sure that, you know, the, the drawers wouldn't be sagging in the center, which, you know, these are about 10 years old now and they've been holding up pretty well. So, so the dimensions seem to work. Uh, one thing that I had planned to do was to seal the wood with some kind of finish, just never got around to it. I'm not sure if I ever will. It, it, it seems to be fine, but uh, I always thought that that would help just uh, keep the wood in nice condition. Uh, maybe I'll get around to it someday. Who knows? But yeah, so that's, that's a basic overview of how, how these drawers are constructed. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it gives you some ideas of options for car storage and also some reasonings why I do it and why it works for my layout. And so uh, if you have any questions or comments, just let me know. And as always, uh, let me know if there's anything in particular you want to see in the next video. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time on the Stockyard Industrial Lead.